Welcome to 2K Ranch Life Podcast. Uh, this this is Kenton Holbrook, and I'm back today with a Bible study here from the ranch. Um, I'm hoping you're enjoying this beautiful above 60 degree f- uh, February day as we are here in Kentucky. It's such a beautiful day, and I've been out and getting some much needed things done here today on the ranch, and uh, I, I got a, a Bible study I'd like to bring with you, share with you today, and it's something that is Christians and um, and non you know everybody everybody deals with this right here and it's called temptation. We all have temptations in this. This world is full of temptations and it is it is lies and schemes from the devil himself to make us lose our focus on Christ. And I'm going to read some scripture with you and it's out of the first book of Corinthians in chapter ten. And um, I'm going to start in verse 12. Wherefore, it says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation take you, taken you, but such as is a common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will make, but with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. So, as the word says here, that uh, he didn't ever say that we wouldn't be tempted. You know, Jesus went into the uh, the wilderness for forty days and forty nights, and the devil tempted him. You know, Satan come to Jesus and tempted him. You know, what did you know? He told you know, and what did Jesus do? Every time the devil tempted Jesus. He quoted scripture back to him. See, the devil does not have any control or authority over us, but what he does is manipulate us into allowing allowing him to... Not, well, I said he didn't have no control. But he, he manipulates us into allowing us to adjust... Uh, allowing him to adjust our focus on things of this world and you know temptation is it is is in many many forms and you know there's people who get you know who are tempted over dealing with you know maybe tobacco or alcohol or you know adultery um money um just i mean there's temptation everywhere you look in 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 all things and we must focus and keep ourselves focused. You know, the Lord says here, he said He said that you would be tempted, but he would make a way out of that temptation. That every time you were tempted, there's a way for you to be able to make it out. To You would be able to bear the temptation. That you could, you could bear the temptation, but not fail to the temptation. And what that means is, is uh, say that, uh, you, you know, you, you struggle with, say, alcohol. And... The Lord's, you know, you get put in a situation where somebody, you know, offers you a drink. And, you know, the Lord will always give you a way to say no or, you know, no, you know, I got to drive after this or something. Or, you know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get my life right with Christ and I don't want to be that old man anymore or that old woman. You know, I don't, that's not who I want to be. So there is a way out. And, um, but the thing about it is if you are battling with temptation, don't, I don't want you to take this and say, "Well, well, I fell to it, so you know, so, you know." And that's what this is a lie from the devil, because the devil will tell you, "Well, you did it once, you might as well do it again, whatever," because uh, you know you you can't get over this. You're, you're stuck to this. You know, um, this is what you know. This is just a failure in you, and you know. But God says He'll make a way out, and then you can bear it. And how do we bear bear things? Is is you know, um, cast your burdens upon me. First Peter five seven. Cast your bur- burdens upon me, for I care for you. So when when we're battling a temptation, something that's going on in our life that we can't um, per se, you know, we shouldn't try to handle anything ourselves, anything. But it, when we're battling these, these uh, that, you know, the daily temptations and the things that the devil's trying to get us to do to draw. Our, and what is a temptation? It is something that draws our focus and our our hearts away from God's will and him and we're not it, we're losing focus on where he wants our focus to be which is directly on him and uh 
So it happens to, um, and it happens to us all. Don't, don't, I'm not going to, I'm sitting, sitting here on this side of this podcast platform as a preacher. And I'm telling you right now, the devil tempts me every day, multiple times of the day. And I, you know, and if, if I don't keep my focus on Christ, you, you know, and I don't keep my eyes and, and, and stay grounded in the word and stay prayed up and guess what I'll fall you know and you you think of you think of the ways the devil tempts you you know and the, a lot of it is is what Christians is is he tries to make us busy you know uh, and and I, and I can I can talk from this from so true experience because I have a I have a heart that wants to help and I have a hard time saying no when somebody asks me for help but I'm going to tell you if you're not effective in every in in every aspect that you're in, then you can you can you can do much. You can try to help too much where your help is not effective. And when you try to spread yourself so thin, and I've done this, spread myself thin, you know, and went with no sleep, and you know, try to do this that, and you know, work jobs and preach churches, and you know, I'll tell you, I work a full time job. I pastor two churches. Um, we got, you know, I talk, you know, I'm coming from the ranch here. Uh, we've got a ranch here. We've got horses. We've got a breeding, uh, a quarter horse breeding program. We've got a, um, you know, I'm a volunteer fireman in the county here in Nicholas County where I live. And, and, uh, so I, I can tell you, I, I do have a lot on my plate, but I am effective in each place. And, and also I'm a husband and I'm married and, and, you know, I, <laughs> So many times that I take that for granted and don't mention that, but I am a husband, and but I tell you, with what I've got going on now, you know, I give God, you know, my. You set my schedule, Lord. You do, and you know what I need to do and where, and I'm going to tell you, everything just flows just right on, and but before when I was trying to do and I was doing more, you know, I was working a couple more part time jobs and and just I mean just just and I was. I was burning the candle both ends. Well, what it, what that did is is it it made me ineffective in my ministry that the Lord has in my life because I didn't have time to sit down and do a podcast like this. You know, I barely had time to you know I pray when I wake up, pray when I go to bed, and pray driving down the road because that's the only quiet time I have. You know, I never I never I ever for a, for a, a while there in my life. I, and I thought I didn't realize it was just confusion from the the devil had me confused, and um, I didn't realize how ineffective that I really was. And so maybe you're at that point today that you you listen to this and you're like, man, I'm just so busy. I don't know. I can't. I can't even look up. I, you know. But I'm. I, you know. I know I'm saved, and 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 I'm trying to do this, and I'm trying to do that. But the problem is, is we have to sit back and figure out not what we're trying to do or what we want to do, but what God wants us to do. And the thing about it is, when you, when you, when you put God first in your life, and you seek His will for your life, the things that you really, really want, He will give to you. See there, you know, because I have everything that I want or need in my life. And the, and the root of it is, is I've got Jesus. And I know that he's all I need and he's all I want. But all the other stuff that I have, he has added to me when I have slowed down, put my focus on him, resisted the temptation of Satan and his and the demons and all that the devil's lies and schemes and quit trying to run around in circles. You know, it's 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 just amazing with with things in life, you know, and I and I'll talk materialistic stuff for a minute. And I don't like being very materialistic, but a lot of people can put perspective on materialistic things, especially if you're listening to this and you're you're lost. So okay. At one time I worked a full time job at night, I worked two days a week at the stockyards, and I worked two fire or a fire department and an EMS service part time, 
and was volunteering here plus farming and everything. And I'm going to tell you, I couldn't afford to get out of my own way. Now I work one job that pays me. And me and Kimber are so blessed. We have a, you know, we live in a brand new, pretty much, we built a custom, custom built brand new home. We both have new vehicles plus extra vehicles to drive. I've got a car I drive to work. I've got a farm truck. I, and we've got a really nice horse trailer. And we're fixing to build a barn. So here on the ranch. So, uh, and we've got new fence on the ranch. I mean, it, it's just... It, it, and I'm not I'm not bragging and I'm not boasting. But what I'm saying is, is when I give God my focus and quit running around and trying to and listen to the temptations of the devil and if you'll do this more and if you'll do this more you can get more and get more when I stop back and when I sit back and said no I'm going to give my whole life to Jesus and whatever I he needs me to have or wants me to have I'll have and guess what I sit here today as proof and I told you all that not to boast not to brag not to nothing but to say when I give my fo- when I put my focus on spreading the gospel above all else, you know, uh, hey, here I sit. And if you'd have told me ten years ago when I accepted my call to preach, hey, if you'll go ahead and get this done, if you'll get this straight, actually before that, I'll back that up. I'll go back to. You know, this year will be 15 years since I've been saved. If you'd have told me that, told me this, and I would have listened to this at the age of 20, man, I think of where I would have been today. But there are so many life lessons that I have learned, and and things that I have suffered through that the Lord has brought me out of, and not that He wanted me to suffer, but there is blessing in that suffer. He he's He uses that. And now I have wisdom because of the suffering to be able to forewarn, you know, folks from not making the same mistakes I did. So that's why I'm here today with this about temptation is we all deal with it. Uh, but how we deal, how, how we should deal with it is the minute we feel tempted is we should take it, we should go straight to the Lord. Lord, I know this is not from you. You know, the Bible tells us to take every thought captive. So if we take that, if when that thought comes in, that's where it starts. It starts as a thought. You know, that's what Jesus says about adultery. He said, if a, if a man looked at a woman with lust in his in his eyes, then you've already committed adultery. You didn't have to sleep with her. You didn't have to commit a sexual act with her to to commit adultery. It, it starts in the mind. So when we t- when we take the the, when, when we listen to scripture in the Bible and, and to take every thought captive and when that thought comes into your mind whether it's like maybe you've got a gambling problem and he's like oh just the, and you pass a gas station that you, you know man I've been lucky here before I think I'll stop and buy me a scratcher you know or you know you know uh, whatever you know maybe it's uh, you got a drinking problem you've had a drinking problem and you pass your old hangout and you're like man you know what? I bet my buddy's in there. I, I'd like to stop and, you know, you know, one or two won't hurt. Then, then well, you know, you're 10 beers, 15, 20, 30, whatever. Uh, sh- your shot's deep. And then then you then you feel so awful. Then you feel convicted. And then, then what the devil says, the devil says, see, it ain't, you, you really didn't give your life to Christ. And you, he just tears you down. And it just makes you worse and worse and worse and worse. And that's why he tries to lie to you. Like, God ain't going to forgive you because he forgave you once. And, and uh, now you failed him again. And here you are right back where you were. That, that, that is just lies from the devil. Folks, we don't understand. And, and, and I think preachers um, don't, don't preach enough about really about Satan. And you say, what do you mean? It, it means you have to realize what he is, who he is, and what he is doing to try to deter and di- and disrupt your life. He, the Bible says he's come to seek, kill, and destroy. 
That's what he's trying to do to you. He's trying to tear you down. He's trying to he's trying to destroy your life and your family and everything about you and everything around you. The devil is trying to destroy it, folks.